What's your reaction? That just makes me think of rape cases, honestly, like because of, like not consent and um, men men just thinking or anybody who rapes someone just thinking that oh they just mean yes it doesn't matter what they say. I never really thought about that in like reference to politicians. I'm like, wow, that's weird. But I mean, it's sad that that's the way people view women, and that for politicians, someone running a country, it's like quite the opposite. they've never been raped before. I think it's sad that people joke about rape because that's what enforces the whole rape culture in places across the world because if you joke about it then it makes it feel less serious to people, especially boys, who are like, oh, you know, if this older person made a joke about it then it's not as serious as I thought it would be and just enforces the whole thing. Have you heard of rape potential? Um, no. So it's basically the potential of girls to be raped based off what, they're wearing. what they look like. Yeah. What, yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, okay, that's fine. Ray, in the Rape, Abuse, and Incest Network first tells us that the definition of rape differs based off of state laws. Before telling us that in general, rape is forced sexual intercourse including vaginal, anal, or oral penetration. Penetration may be by a body part or an object. Rape victims may be forced through threats or physical means. In about 8 out of 10 rapes, no weapon is used other than physical force. Anyone can be a victim of rape, women, men, or children. Finally, sexual assault is the unwanted sexual contact that stops short of rape or attempted rape. This includes sexual touching and fondling. What constitutes sexual assault for you guys? A sexual assault to me mm, is usually a man to a woman, not always, but I think usually, and it's when he does anything to her that makes her feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And really, like, it doesn't even have to be, like, rape. Anything, like, uncomfortable, like, has to do with, like, sexuality. I think it's, like, unconsented sexual advances. That's good. I like that. And it's just when you, when, like, a girl doesn't feel safe, or a guy, they don't feel safe in the circumstances, and usually it's, like... I think people use like substances like alcohol as an excuse, but in truth, like it can happen to anyone in the problem. Anything where someone is unwillingly taken advantage of, that can be in a drunken state of mind. It could be wrongfully, like you know, played into thinking it was something else happening, or even if you know, like they're unconscious, like they can't say no. Okay. I think sexual assault is when any person, whether it's like a guy or a girl, but in most cases it's guys, uh, tries to rape or uses physical abuse to like get a girl to like get with him or vice versa, and I think it's disgusting. Okay. Say it again. Sexual assault can also be verbally, like you can verbally sexually assault someone, and rape is like tends to normally be like physically like completely against your will. Well, if he doesn't use force then and like I can ask that one. I can ask that I feel one. like what do you think? What if he doesn't use force? If he doesn't use force and there is no like drug in being involved, you know, then it's she's not, not sexual assault. It's technically not sexual assault. However, it, that's where it, there are, it gets there. There's a blurred line because obviously, if she's not consenting, she's not consenting. That's whether he uses forces or not. Like if she says no and doesn't fight back, she's still saying no, and that is still rape. What do you think the rapist looks like? I don't know. I would imagine it could be anybody. So I guess a rapist could look like anyone, but I mean the stereotypical image that I have in my mind is a creepy looking guy, um, just kind of gross looking, um, like, I don't know, just really creepy, really greasy hair. like. What do you think a rapist looks like? I don't think a rapist has a face. Everywhere I'm turning Nothing seems complete
for the better part of me. Uh. Hang my head from sorrow. Stay the humanity. As a woman, do you think it's easy to come forward um, when things like sexual assault happen in the community? No, I think it's really difficult to do it because you feel like you've allowed it to happen a lot of times as the victim and even though you didn't do anything wrong and women should know that, you immediately go to that place and space and so I think it's very tough for women to openly admit that they've been assaulted or raped. Um, why do you think victim shaming happens? Um, because no one wants to take responsibility. Because I think attorneys use it as a tool to help get their defendants uh, leaner sentences or get them off completely, and I just think it's an evil practice. So would you say it occurs um, just generally as a legal practice or, you know, in our general or wider society? Um, I think it's more prevalent and you hear more about it in the legal practice. I'm sure it happens outside of the legal practice. I can't name an incident that I know of, but I'm sure it happens. And my guess is victims would be afraid to even talk about it. Um, do you think you'll ever be in a position where you'll blame like another victim for what happened to them? I'm not saying no, I just need to think. I think it's definitely easier said than done. Like saying that like you won't blame them. But honestly, we all have those instances where like when we talk when girls gossip and something happens to some girl, we're like, oh, it's just a slut. So that it's like normal. I guess that's like to the extent I'll go for like victim shaming, but like I would never if someone was actually raped, I would never be like a turkey. Um, no, I don't think I'd ever be in that position just because I think even if they're like drunk or on drugs or whatever, I really don't think it's ever their fault just because there shouldn't be men or sometimes in the case women that assault other people. It's definitely always their fault and they're the ones that should be like in trouble for what happened. If you knew a girl who were a bit more on the promiscuous side, do you think you would believe her story if she came forward and said she were raped? I don't think rape is a joke, so I would take her seriously. I would believe her if she said she was raped. If down the line she goes and says, I was joking around, I would be really disappointed. I hate to sound like a parent, I guess, but I'd be disappointed if someone joked about it. But I would believe them no matter what circumstances they are in their life, past or present. I would believe somebody. Holly, do you know what Title IX is? No, I do not. Um, okay, well, Title IX is a part of the Education Amendments Act of 1972, and basically um, protects from discrimination um, based off of sex. Um, discrimination or harassment includes sexual assault, um, not providing equal opportunities for girls in sports or um, like education or things funded by the government, and also in pregnancy. Um, do you think that this affects your life or will affect your life at any time? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it will, um, especially with jobs. Um, already, not at my internship now, but um, for like other jobs I've worked at, like the boss is normally a male. Like um, we already know the dis 
um, like the disparity between women's pay and men's pay, and so I think it'll definitely affect me. And even college, like for most schools, it's harder to get in when you're a girl because so many more girls apply to schools than boys. So I think it definitely will affect me and affects me today. Do you know what Title IX is? Yes. Um, do you think this has or will affect your life? It definitely has. How? Well, I was able to play college sports. I was able to be part of athletics from when I was really little. And if it wasn't for Title IX, it, I wouldn't have been able to do that. It wouldn't have been acceptable for girls to be um, in all kinds of sports. Do you think it affects you in the workplace? Uh... I guess probably as a coach, yeah, because it's now um, considered, you know, an everyday thing to have a, a female coach. So for my role as a coach, it's not questioned. Um, so yeah. Okay. So Title IX is also supposed to protect um, from discrimination uh, based off of by sex or um, harassment, which also includes sexual assault. Do you think this has really been effective? I would think that the majority of the population doesn't know there's a connection to that. So. I would say probably not. Um, I would think that somebody would have to bring that issue up in order to make that connection between the two. Um, I think that's great to know because I didn't know that, so I think that's a really good thing. Do you know what Title IX is? Yes. What is it? To you, what, what do you think it is, son? Okay, wait, I don't. So it's a part of the Education Amendment Act of 1972, which protects from discrimination by sex. Um, with, this means that you know girls can go to the same like go to good schools and like play on sports teams or whatever, but it also um, protects from discrimination and harassment, which includes sexual assault. Um, do you think you've been affected by this in your life, or do you think you ever will be affected by this? Definitely, because I can play sports and do what I want, go to the school I want, and it doesn't matter that I'm a girl.